Hi, my name is Amin. I'm a doctor working in anesthesia and intensive care. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like and comment as it does support the channel. This channel is all about talking about a career in anesthetics, being as doctor, and also a bit about my life as a new dad. In this video, we'll be talking about anesthesia. I'll start by talking about its definition, what it was like historically, and how we actually perform anesthesia today. So to start with, let's define anesthesia. So anesthesia literally means a loss of sensation. It's a broad term and it can cover anything from local anesthetics, like what you have at the dentist to numb your teeth, to skin infiltration to numb the area of the skin. And sometimes it can be used in other methods such as an epidural or a spinal anesthetic. These are commonly used for labor and C-sections. And what we know most commonly as anesthesia might be a general anesthetic. A general anesthetic is controlled unconsciousness. It's like a state of sleep, but it's different in that you can't just be woken up. All of the medications that have been used to put you to sleep need to be completely removed and cleared from your body before you can actually wake up and be back to your normal self. A general anesthetic has classically been described as a triad of three different things. That is sedation, being asleep, analgesia, being pain-free, and amnesia, being unable to recall that period of time where you were under an anaesthetic. Anesthesia allows surgery to take place without the patient being aware of what's going on. It's become incredibly useful as it's allowed life-saving procedures to take place without the patient experiencing the pain associated with surgery. These are procedures that would otherwise be impossible to perform. If someone were to be able to feel the sensation of knife to skin, it would no doubt leave them scarred in more ways than one. Left unchecked, surgery would definitely hurt. The body has its ways of responding to this pain stimulus. It can be with a response with the heart rate increasing, the blood pressure going up, and the respiratory rate rising as well. There are also some reflex movements, such as wincing or withdrawing from pain. The benefit of anesthesia is that you can actually control these responses. You can control the heart rate and the blood pressure and keep them within a certain range, the range that would be optimal for surgery. In times gone by, anesthesia was very different to what it is today. It was somewhat barbaric, and essentially there were rags dipped in pungent liquids and patients would have these cover their mouths, they'd breathe in the vapours until it would knock them unconscious. These days, that approach isn't as acceptable. However, techno technology has advanced to the point that anesthesia right now is not only far more safe, but far less traumatising. So let's talk about a general anaesthetic. What happens when a patient comes in for anaesthesia? So let's say someone's having their appendix removed. They come into the hospital, they get seen by the surgeons and a decision is made that they need to be operated on. We anaesthetists then assess them. We find out what their general health is like. We take a thorough history and find out exactly what's going on with them. We look at all sorts of aspects like what they can do on a daily basis, what medications they take, any previous reactions they've had to any drugs. All of this has implications in how we manage them during the anaesthetic. When it's time for surgery, we bring them into the anaesthetic room and we start by inserting a small drip. So that could be a small plastic cannula inserted somewhere into the veins. We place that there so that when we need to give them medications, we don't need to give them repeat injections with needles. And at the same time, we could have infusions running, things like fluids and other medications. We then give them a mask with pure oxygen to breathe in. So this is 100% oxygen and it's used to fill their lungs up with oxygen and get rid of the nitrogen. The aim is to provide enough oxygen as a reserve for when they stop breathing because of what happens next. When it's time to go off to sleep, we give an injection through the cannula. That's usually propofol, but other intravenous sedating agents are used as well. Things like ketamine and sometimes things like sodium thiopental. This medication goes through the veins and circulates until it reaches the brain. Once it reaches the brain, it renders the patient unconscious. Once the patient's unconscious, they usually stop breathing. But that's okay, because the anaesthetist's specialist area is in managing the airway and breathing of an unconscious patient. The way they do this is by placing a different mask over their face. They form a tight seal around so that there's no leakage of air, and they squeeze a bag which is connected to that mask. That bag acts as the lungs, and by squeezing it you can actually inflate and deflate the lungs if you have a good seal around the mouth. While this goes on, 
we turn on the anesthetic vapors. So to maintain unconsciousness throughout the operation, we have different approaches. The most common way is to keep them breathing in and out a certain type of gas, and that keeps them asleep. We replace them on a ventilator, so that controls the amount of gas that they are breathing in and out. Before we can place them on a ventilator, we have to make sure we have a secured airway. What that means is that we put a breathing tube through the back of the throat into their breathing pipe. So we do this with something called a laryngoscope. Now that's used to make sure that the tube that's placed in the breathing pipe is placed in the correct place. Sometimes we even use video laryngoscopes, which is a modern form of laryngoscope which has a camera attached to the tip. And this improves the accuracy with which you can place that breathing tube. Once we're happy with that airway, we connect that to the ventilator and we set the dials so that we can control their respiratory rate, exactly how many milliliters of air is going in and out of their lungs, and the concentration of the anesthetic agents going inside and outside of their body. We can also do more complicated things like control the exact amount of pressure we're using. It's often said that administering an anesthetic is like flying a plane, in that the biggest challenge is takeoff and landing, in this case intubation and extubation, and generally it's smooth sailing for the duration of the flight, which is when the patient is just steady under an anesthetic. Now that's generally true, the ch biggest challenges are on intubation and extubation, but it's not always smooth sailing for the mainstay of surgery. Sometimes a surgical procedure or the patient's pre-existing health conditions can make that part quite complicated. And it's important that the anaesthetist is quite vigilant of all of their vitals, constantly monitoring and documenting things like their heart rate, blood pressure, anaesthetic agent used, and the pressures within their lungs. The anaesthetist during this time needs to be on the lookout for things that could go wrong, and they need to be able to respond quickly and effectively. They usually have a large selection of drugs at their disposal, and when used in the correct way, can get them out of most difficult situations. What I mean by this is there are drugs to raise the heart rate, change the blood pressure, and also medications to paralyze the patient so that we can take full control over things like their breathing. It's important to mention though that these are usually emergency medications and for the mainstay of an anesthetic for a generally uncomplicated case, anesthesia is very safe. When the surgery is finished and the anesthetic needs to be turned off, we make sure that we take a few precautions. So we start by filling their lungs with 100% of oxygen again, just in case we have a period of time where we can't ventilate them or inflate their lungs and deflate their lungs. And we make sure that we give them medications to prevent them from feeling sick when they wake up. We position the patient on the bed, we turn off the gases and we wait a period of time for the body to wash out all of these anesthetic vapors that are keeping them asleep. Sometimes we give them additional drugs to help reverse the effects of the other drugs we've given. I know it sounds complicated, but an example of this would be the paralyzing agents. To keep a patient completely asleep and still for an operation, we sometimes give a medication that paralyzes all of the skeletal muscles within their body. That means that, with, that, means that we have full control over their breathing and they're not trying to breathe against the machines. That's very useful for certain types of surgeries where you want them to be really still. However, on waking up, you don't want someone to wake up while still being paralyzed. So in that instance, other medications are given to reverse the effects of the paralysis. When the patient wakes up, the breathing tube is removed from their mouth and they're allowed to breathe normal oxygen and air. At this point, they're taken to recovery and nurses look after them for, for a period of time, making uh, a note of their observations and making sure they've got symptom relief for things like nausea and vomiting and pain. The most common side effects or things experienced by patients at this point would be nausea, vomiting, possibly a sore throat as well from the breathing tube that has been sitting at the back of their throat. Anesthesia is generally very safe and patients are usually ready to go home on the same day after, get, after having had an anesthetic. Obviously this depends on the type of surgery and how healthy they have been before coming into the hospital. The anesthetist is trained to deal with different types of emergencies that they might face. Some of these complications are quite easily managed and some are quite worrying. With anaesthetics, everything we do is very acute. We don't necessarily give drugs that take days or weeks to act, but usually within seconds or minutes. And this is quite helpful because the emergencies we come across usually require an urgent intervention, something that needs to be done there and then 
to save the patient's life. So some common complications or difficulties with the airway would be an inability to get a good seal with that mask I talked about. If there's a leakage from that mask, then squeezing the bag, no matter how hard, won't inflate or deflate the lungs because it will just escape from around the mouth. That's something we call difficult ventilation. Difficult intubation is where we use a laryngoscope to look through the back of the throat, but it's difficult to place that breathing tube into the breathing pipe. That could be for a number of reasons. It could be to do with the weight, could be to do with the anatomy, and it could be to do with the conditions that the patient is in at that point in time. So that's just a brief introduction into what an anesthetic is and how we administer an anesthetic. If you liked what you saw, then please hit that subscribe button and make sure you comment with anything else you'd like to see more of. It really does support the channel. Thanks for watching and goodbye.